Hello everyone, today we're going to look at the product configurator in Salesforce Revenue Lifecycle Management. First, we're going to review the standard configurator flow offered by Salesforce within RLM. Then we're going to see how we can clone that standard flow to create a custom configuration flow. And finally, we're going to see how we can assign that custom flow to either product or product classifications. All right, let's jump right into Salesforce. All right, so first let's look at the configurator within the transaction line editor how we can open it and what it looks like by default, right? So if we look at our product model tree, go to the right hand side on the arrow, hit configure, that takes us right into the configurator, which is the standard default configurator without any modifications so far. So we can see that we have some product details on the left hand side, then the attributes are on there and then all the product options are available for selection by product groups. On the right hand side, we have the pricing summary that shows up and gets updated if you have instant pricing enabled or if you click update pricing. So that's how you use it within the transaction line editor. Let's now look at what it looks like in the flow editor. All right, so this is the flow editor for the default product configurator that comes with Salesforce RLM. As you can see, it only has one screen and that flow is a template, so you can't modify it, but you can clone it and create new versions. But before we do this, let's look at the options that are available within that screen. So as you can see, we have multiple custom components that are available with RLM that are going to populate data within that screen flow. Most of, most, most of them, you can't see any previews of it, but you can see all the data, how it's being mapped, and you have titles that explain what that would be, right? So that reflects what we were just looking at. So product configuration, other different messages. So if you have error messages, that's where they're going to show up. And then you have the product header, product attribute, and then the option groups as we were looking at, and the, on the right-hand side, the pricing summary. So if you want to be able to modify this, as I said, this is a template, so you can't modify it. So if I go and save as, I can save it as a new flow because this one is a template. So let's create demo custom flow. All right, let's save it. <clears throat> All right, so this is our new version, demo custom flow version one. And now from this, well, you're open to anything because you're using the standard flow editor now. So you can do whatever you want. So you could get data that you want to show on there. You could add, you could do whatever you want. Let's simply modify the screen to show a message to the user. So if we want to add something, this is our custom screen. So we want to add display text. Let's add this to our screen. All right, and then the message should be, please make sure add wheels to the car or whatever message you need really. We're just testing this out. So now once this is added on, you can modify it. You can make it bigger, do whatever you want, right? Or add any any other components that you would like to add to this screen. Really we're only testing how we can modify this and how we should be able to configure this. So now that I'm done, hit done. I save my new flow. Wanna make sure it's activated. All right, so we've got our flow active. Now we wanna go on the cog, make sure we've got the flow API name. We'll need this for the assignment. All right. All right, so we have an option called product configuration flow in our menu for revenue lifecycle management. This is one of them. This is the current default version. So it's the custom product configurator. It's active and it's the default one. So it's gonna be the one that applies to any product or product classes that don't have a specific one assigned to them. If we go to that tab again, we see the list that exists already. We have another one that's not default. Now we need to create a new product configuration flow record for the flow that we just created. So let's hit new. Flow identifier is gonna be the API name of our flow. We The flow we just created, demo custom flow. We do not wanna set it to default, but we do want it set to active so it can be selected. Let's then hit save. All right, now we wanna make sure it's assigned to the products we need it assigned to. So in this case, we wanted it assigned to the model tree. So in the product configuration flow assignment, again, we create a new record. We don't want a product classification. We want a specific product. So we'll select the model tree. It's save. And now our new flow is assigned to the model tree product. So if we jump back to our quote, all right, back on your quote, let's make sure you reload before you test your updated configuration. All right, on our model tree, let's click the down arrow, configure. And there it is. We already see as this is loading, we have our new message that we added on there. Please make sure to add wheels to the car, right? So this is a fairly simple example, but it shows you that really you can modify and edit your product configuration flow to do 
anything that you want that you would be able to do right with a regular flow. That's what makes it really interesting with an RLM, right? Easy modifications to the look and feel, the UI and the UX for your user. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully that was helpful and a good intro to the product configurator and revenue lifecycle management. Please subscribe, hit me up with comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching and have a good day.